Uh, Janelle Johnson, president of our president elect of the SCA. And I want to welcome you all to our first ever staff elevated conference. Yay. <laughs> it's very exciting. And I look forward to working with all of you next year for our next one when I am the president. And speaking of working with you, we would love for you to volunteer to be a part of the SCA. Uh, our elections and nominations are coming up really soon, and we can use all the help that we can get. And if you don't feel like you can give as much time as you think you need to with the board, then you can volunteer just as a staff member, come and say, we want to help you with this, or if you have an hour here or an hour there, let us know and we'll put you to work. And you can help us to make things better for the staff here at USU. And um, also, we've got the president's investiture coming up soon. And the SEA is uh, in charge of doing a service project. So we've got it almost planned, but we'd love for everyone to be willing and able to participate in that as well. It's going to be on the Saturday. Is it the April 13th? So we'd love for everyone who could to come and participate. We'll let you know more about the details when we have it all arranged. Okay, and then also I would like to introduce you to our staff, our SEA president, Allison Fabricius. And here she is. <laughs> Thank you, Jenna Lee. Um, Very much appreciate that. I'm about to be really awkward and transition to a different kind of mic for just a second because I'm going to use my hands a lot and I'm just going to give you all that heads up now. And then I'm going to drop it and it will be fine. Okay. Can you all hear me still? Yes. Okay. Love the people who are already engaged. Perfect. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Jenna Lee, for that introduction. Um, and thank you for sort of the reminders, things to keep in mind, y'all. Um, SCA works because you all want to invest. Uh, was that sort of a creepy voice from above? Yeah, that's fine. It's fine. Um, because the theme of my remarks today, my hope, my takeaway from all of this of today, from the conference, from the different things that are happening um, throughout the week, is that we, the Staff Employee Association, work because there's investment. And I hope that some of the things that you took away from Jane's keynote this morning, if you haven't seen it, it is on YouTube. We will be sending it out. Please watch it. It was amazing. I, that was one of the favorite keynotes that I have seen in a very long time. One of her, the, one of the big pieces and keys that she took out that I really took away from that was elevate yourself, invest in yourself. Um, I'm going to get really real for a minute and say, I have been here for seven years now and I understand what it is to offer suggestions, to offer ideas, to offer a whole lot of gusto and be turned down. I understand what it is to want to be invested and that that's not always like the first priority of the people that we're working with. I get that. I understand. That was the thing that kept going over in my head during her keynote was I was like, but what if I try and that's not accepted? That's okay. As she said, six out of 10 times, six, six out of 10 people at that table might not be over the moon about your suggestion as long as you are over the moon about your suggestion. And I love being a staff at Utah State University. I love the people that we work with. Um, and that is a variety of people. That might be the people who drive our Aggie shuttle. Um, I waved too many of them as I was walking up from motor pool this morning. Um, that might be the people in the registrar's office. That might be admissions, advisors. That might be custodial staff, our facilities who do amazing things. We have a variety of amazing staff at this university. We are 2,700 plus strong. We cover the state of Utah um, and beyond. We have remote 46 remote workers across the United States as well. And so we're not just an Aggie family that's on Logan campus. We are an Aggie family that spans a number of states and all of the counties of Utah. And so when we invite you out to this conference, when we say staff elevated, it's because we see this delightful spark in every one of us, our love, our passion for the people that we work and that, that we serve for, for the students that we provide the opportunity for them to come and get gain an education. 
And we want to take that spark and we want to flam, flam. Yeah, we want to flam those flames. <laughs> let's let's try that again, guys. Uh, I'm running off of not enough sleep and a whole lot of travel time. So I spent my day Monday. I drove to Kaysville and I visited the outreach, uh, not the outreach statewide. Sorry, I visited the statewide and extension office in Kaysville, and then I drove down to Ephraim and I visited with extension staff and statewide staff um, in Ephraim, and then I went through a very weavy windy canyon to end up at Price, to visit with Price. Because seeing that seed, seeing that flame, seeing that desire means that we go to where it is and we fan the flames there. It means that we see that desire, we see those needs. And then I, my job as your SEA president is to start having conversations with people. And that if I hear need, I go to that Dean, I go to that VP, I go to that AVP and I start talking to people and saying, were you aware? And sometimes they'll say, yes, we're working on it. Sometimes they'll say, no, thank you so much for telling me. And sometimes they say, get out of my office. And then I go back to the staff and I say, we're going to fan your flame. It'll be great. <laughs> because it, when we believe in ourselves, when we believe what we have to offer, a variety of things change. We might not see it at the university level that we hope to see it immediately, but we see it in our departments. We see it in our offices. We see it in our relationships. And that is the big takeaway for me from Jane's, um, from Dr. Arungu's keynote this morning. And that is you, you build belonging where you are. So please go back to your offices and say hello to people. Please go back to your offices and say, good morning. Please go back to your offices and say, how can I help you? Because as we build that Aggie family in our individual spheres, that grows. And the more often that I go back, that I go to deans, I go to VPs, I go to administration and I say, hey, by the way, staff just want to help. They're like, really? That's so cool. How can we work together? And so I'm hoping that each one of us will keep building those ideas. I'm hoping that each one of us will keep growing within ourselves and elevating within ourselves. Because as we build that belonging, we build that community, people pay attention and people ask questions. And there is so much power when people ask questions. So my topic today, here I am, I've been talking to you for like seven minutes. We haven't even gone to the first slide. So let's get to the first slide, shall we? And our first slide talks all about what the current work of SEA is. This is not a true keynote. Probably the most motivational that I will get is those that first seven minutes. So if you all just want to jump up and leave now, that's totally an option on the table. I hope you don't. Because today is my opportunity to offer a state of the union sort of SCA address. And the more that I go out and meet people, the more that I go make connections with people, the more that I find out that A, people don't know what SCA is, um, and B, they don't know what we do and what it is that we offer. And so my hope today is actually to dive in and say, what is it that we do and what is it that we offer? So I'm gonna go over what the current work of the SCA is, what we've accomplished, how we represent staff, um, I've been in a lot of meetings with President Cantwell since she started, and she has given us much to do, and I would love your help to do it. Um, and then also just sort of other things that we're working on because we are an ever improving, ever progressing association, and we want to learn and grow. So we're going to go over all of those things, and then it wouldn't be a fantastic keynote if I didn't leave you with an invitation. So stay tuned. It's coming. So first off, what is the work that we are currently working on? What is it that we've accomplished? Actually, I'm gonna back up. I knew I should have taken notes, but it's okay. So first step is, what in the heck is the Staff Employee Association? Does anybody, do you, do you know what we do? Do you know what we offer? Does anybody, okay, I'm just looking for like, do I get thumbs up? Do I get head shakes? Where are we at? Do, do you know? Okay, I love that maybe sort of kind of. Okay, so I, I've, I've got a thumbs down. Good, I got a thumbs up, love that. How would you, how would you explain the Staff Employee Association? everything in USU and re represent the rest of the staff. Um, make us aware of benefits, um, connection, connect us, let us know what other areas are doing. Perfect. I love it. Okay. So she said, for those who are on Zoom and for those who are out and about, uh, we represent. So we as the board represent staff at the university. Yes. 
Um, we do provide connection and communication, hopefully. That's in the newsletter that you all get once a month, at least once a month, twice a month when it's a really exciting month. Um, and then we also are working to provide benefits and to communicate the benefits that we have. So that is a fantastic overview. I love it. Thank you so much, Mel. Um, as part of that work, I sit on the uh, on President Cantwell's leadership team. So every second Wednesday, I find myself in Champaul in discussions with deans and VPs about the state of the staff and the state of the university as a whole. And generally, I'll wave at the bottom and I'll be like, hey, did you think about this? And it's great. So we have conversations like that. I meet with President Cantwell once a month for an hour. And we sit down and she says, so, hey, what's happening? And I say, well, did you know that some things are going down? Did you know that these are some concerns that we have? Um, and so I, I, we have those discussions and the initiatives that President Cantwell has given the SCA board come from those discussions. So I'm, I'm in those places. This year, we have kicked off meeting with deans and VPs. Um, and then they have invited us back to their divisions and their colleges to then present their, to their staff. So if you haven't heard from us yet, we are coming eventually. We kind of got a little hijacked by the conference, but we're in process of meeting with all the deans and VPs and giving them an overview of the work that we do. Because part of SCA, we also provide scholarship opportunities. So the SCA provides a thousand dollar scholarship for you um, as you're pursuing your undergrad or your graduate degree at USU. Those applications start at sort of the beginning of the school year and then reopen again in January. So if you're interested, look for the newsletter. The newsletter will tell you um, when those applications are open and when you can apply. We also provide scholarship opportunities to go to conferences. So we cannot provide for travel, but we do provide for a portion of the conference registration. So if you are wanting to go to a conference to grow, to like expand your horizons as Jane was talking about today, please apply for that scholarship. And if you have questions, go to usu.edu slash SEA and it will show you all of the things. Because some of the work in our efforts to communicate internally and externally was to update the website. So if you all wanna pull out your phones right now and go to usu.edu slash SEA, uh, you won't just see a pretty picture of my face, hallelujah, because the conference is happening. So take a look. Please wander around that website. If you have suggestions or questions, please reach out. Um, my name, because again, I did a horrible job at introducing myself. I never just say, hi, I'm Allison Fabricius, and I'm the SEA president. I love my last name. You think I'd say it more often. So if you have questions, concerns, complaints, curiosities, lobbies, please email me, allison.fabricius at usu.edu. I am your staff representative, and I want to be able to actually take the information from staff to administration, so you have to talk to me. The other opportunity, as you'll notice on the website, if you scroll down and you scroll down and you scroll down, you will see a contact us form. Please use that contact us form, and please use it for anything. Uh, well, not that an elevator is broken in the library. Please don't use it for that. Please contact the CERC service desk and we'll try and help you there. Um, in my day job, I'm building coordinator over in the library, so I will actually still help you if the elevator's down in the library, uh, but please use the proper channels for that, not the contact us form. Uh, this contact us form though is also for the good things. What are the wins that you're seeing? What are the things that you are excited about? Because part of change is not changing what works. So we also need to know what works. So please get on our website. Please fill out that contact us form. Please let us know the good, the bad, the ugly. That's the tagline that I want to go into the contact us form. Contact us, the good, the bad, the ugly. Not that you are any of those things, but the things you want to share with us. So on that website, we've updated those things. We split the newsletter into two. The Connections Committee is highlighting teams across the university, across the state. If you would like your team highlighted, whether you want a picture of yourself or not, that is not required, please reach out to these two lovely ladies. I've got Ellen back there and I've got Haley up here. They run our connections committee and they do absolutely amazing things in helping us know what other people are doing. That's an important part of belonging. That's an important part of connection is being recognized. So please, on the next time we send out that email in the newsletter, scroll down, and find the spotlight your team. Spotlight your team. Anybody can nominate. We'd love to hear from everybody. Um, the other part of recognition that we do is that we do employee of the month. Nominate your coworkers. 
Uh, you can't nominate, you could nominate yourself. It might look a little weird, but please nominate your coworkers. Please nominate those that are doing amazing work in your space and tell us about it. We want to know. Um, and then we are working with our statewide reps to meet with extension statewide to develop an SCA presence across the state. How many people in the room right now are from statewide or extension? Yes, please stand up and please give them a round of applause. You are the only one that stands up. I love it. Go find Spencer later and tell him to give you stuff. And if he asks questions, do it. Um, I do, having just driven nine hours in a car the last two days, I feel for you statewide. I feel for you extension. And I only had to do that once. So thank you so much for taking the time to be here. I'm so grateful that you are here because that is another big piece of fostering belonging. It is actually getting everybody in the same space. So for all of those who are feeling awkward because you just got a round of applause, I want you to sit with yourself and I want you to breathe in and say, yes, I am awesome. Only one of you is gonna do that because you're listening. <laughs> so this is the work that we have accomplished so far. This is work that I am so jazzed about. The other piece that is not on the slide uh, because I was in the thick of conference planning and not in conference recognition is our, this conference. This conference is the first that we as the SCA staff have ever had. It's the first one we've ever been put on. As I became president, I went through and I read every bylaw since the creation of SEA in 2016. I did not get to CEA and PEA. I apologize, but there were a lot. But I read SEA and I saw a professional development conference come up multiple times. And I decided that 2024 with the new president was the year to do it. And so I would love if my conference team would please stand up, some of which are still hiding in the lobby, but that's okay. Stand up, listen, please listen. There you go. Thank you. Can they get a round of applause too? I am so grateful for their work. I could not have done it without them. This would have been a very different experience without them. So when you see them in the cool shirts and the name tags, also, if you see members of the board, they've got the fun little white name tags, please thank them too. Um, we're looking at how, much, how many hours SEA board puts in. It's a lot. Um, so please thank them because the work that they're doing is what provides us the recognition opportunities we have. It's what provides us the scholarship opportunities that we have. It's what gives us the newsletter that we have. All of these things happen because of people generously volunteering. Also, if you want to go one step up and up beyond, we're talking about ownership, right? Go to their supervisors and thank their supervisors for letting them do what they do. Um, because there have been many a times when I've walked into my office and I've said, sorry, Rachel, Rachel Ham's my boss. Thank you, Rachel, you're awesome. Uh, I walk into her office and I say, I gotta go. And she says, how can I help you? How can this get done? And so please also, if you see their supervisors, give them a ginormous thank you because it is their willingness to support us in doing what we do that also lets us do what we do. So this is what we've accomplished. I'm rather thrilled about it. Um, and there's, wait, there's more. So we're also starting to do a twice yearly email to supervisors about SEA. One of the biggest things that I hear from staff and from deans and VPs is that deans and VPs don't know what we're doing. So they can't encourage their staff to go if they don't know what's happening. So we're, we've started sending out an email to them so they know that the conference is happening. So they know that these different things are happening. So please like have discussions, be like, do you remember that email? Maybe you don't know them well enough to have that conversation. Come to me, that contact us form in the website, fill that out and be like, my Dean doesn't know that this happens. And I'll be like, ah, I will go talk to your Dean. It'll be great. We are doing professional development seminars uh, once a month, except for this month, which is a ginormous professional development seminar. We're doing employee of the months. We are refining our research and evaluation committee based on university needs. That is a brand new committee. So some of you who've been part of SCA and CEA for a while are probably going, what in the heck is that? That's what the legislative committee used to be because laws changed in the state of Utah and we can't send staff to Capitol Hill anymore. So now we have a research and evaluation committee. We created that, we transitioned to that committee because the more the administration asks us questions, the more that we need to have data readily available for them. And so we wanted a committee. But what this means is that you guys have to use your words. It means you have to actually fill out the surveys. In my visits with statewide and extension, I heard that our emails get deleted a lot. You know, 
I didn't take that personally because I didn't know that I got an SCA newsletter until about two years ago. So I can't judge. Um, our newsletter, though, is the home of our employee of the month. It is the home of our, I report out. So every month that blurb at the beginning is me reporting out saying who I've talked to on your behalf. It's concerns we're working on on your behalf. So please read it. And if, if you are struggling with what your representative is doing, please let me know. I'll do something different. But so read the, read the newsletter. It's also the home of our surveys. So when we need information from you in a quick way, we're gonna be leaning towards surveys. Our hope is for that to change over time. We have some things that are starting that I'm very excited about. We are going to start a first ever open forum where we are going to invite all of you and faculty into a room together to ask about childcare, to ask about the nature of your climate and your culture in your workspace. We wanna know. So please know that's forthcoming. We don't have dates yet because most of the things that I do happen on the fly, but just pay attention to the newsletter. You'll find out, it'll be great. Uh, and then the scholarships and well, I've already mentioned benefits and staff welfare works directly with HR on RFPs and different activities to make sure that staff are getting the benefits that we need. So if you have questions, they're the ones to contact. So that website you found up at the top has organization. Click on that and that will tell you who all of our committee members are and the work that they do. Reach out to them, blow up their inboxes. Please make them complain to me, it'll be great. And then, uh, and then we have USU Eastern. I had a fantastic discussion with Logan Bullock yesterday. Um, he's been meeting with Doug Miller. He is the USU Eastern rep and they are, they are blowing it up at USU Eastern. It is an exciting time to be alive at USU Eastern. Um, so I'm hoping to also take notes and see what I can do here. Time will tell. So that's, that is the work. That's what we've accomplished. That's what we are kind of doing from a year to year basis. I have already mentioned this, so I might move beyond this, but I did want you to see all in one place. This is where SCA functions for you on campus. These are the meetings we're invited to. These are the discussions that we have. Um, so it's attending leadership meetings with President Cantwell, deans and VPs. I'm on a conflict of interest committee, which now Janalee is on because she so graciously accepted it for me. Thank you. Uh, and that is actually anytime we have ethics questions or issues in research or in people who are in research offices, that's where that goes. I didn't know that committee existed. If you have questions, let's talk. I can at least point you to Angie Hoffman and she can tell you more because she will know more. Um, we also are on the calendaring committee, the committee on committees, parking and transportation, and the grievance committee. So the one place that SCA currently exists, like it's actually written out as the Staff Employee Association exists, is in the 300s policy for the grievance process. We provide committee members for the grievance process from the SCA board. So just know we exist in small but mighty ways. I'll explain more in a minute. We're also on the DEI council. I meet with uh, VP Arungu once a month and we have discussions as she mentioned in her keynote. I meet with HR quarterly to just say, hey, what's coming? What can we do? How can we help each other? And another thing that we started this year is monthly meetings with faculty senate presidents. We have created a task force for uh, staff, and uh, staff and faculty joint task force. That task force's job is to handle two things. One, to work on the childcare issue, which we are getting to in the next slide or the next two slides. Um, so we're gonna handle that one together. And then the other piece is to be a clearinghouse for communication and connection between faculty and staff. That's something that we have heard a lot. Uh, sometimes words like second class citizens have come up. I might have thought them a time or two myself, or just we can we have ideas and they have ideas. Why aren't we talking about our ideas? It can be it can be either of those options. It can be any sort of thing of just how do we connect better? How do we kind of break down these silos and these walls? We're all at USU to help students. How are we working together to best help students? That's the hope. That's the wish. That's the dream. So we've started having those meetings so that we can kind of steer this task force in directions that can be most beneficial for faculty and for staff in the university. Um, and then as Janalee mentioned, we are running a service project for President Cantwell's investiture. I'm excited. Whether you're a decorating fiend or a quilting fabric-y fiend, there is something for you April 13th. So please stay tuned. And if you're not a fiend at all, you just love them, also you're invited. Because um, some of you are sitting there, I am no fiend. 
that's fine. We, we don't all have to be AONs. It's fine. Okay. Initiatives from chat. Okay. Actually, I'm going to pause because I've just been talking at you for like nigh on a while. Any questions so far? Let's, let's pause and have that. You're going to have to shout. I'll also repeat it in my mic. Yes. <laughs> that is a function of academia. You're welcome. Um, so, sorry. The, the real answer is uh, the committees on committees is, is what as far as I know, if someone knows this better, please help me. Because I put Brandon Hansen, our past president, on that committee because it scares me, if I'm being honest. But it is it is determining the committees that are functioning at the university, who makes up them, sort of the makeup that each committee needs. Um, so that Because committees at the university are sort of the thing that gets stuff done at a university level. Um, or at a, at a division or college uh, college level. Um, and so uh, Brandon Hansen is our representative there to just kind of see, do we need more staff representation somewhere? Or is our voice kind of being heard where it could be helpful? And those conversations are happening in that committee. Anybody who actually knows what the committee on committee, did I just answer that question correctly? Somebody should fact check me, please. Mm -hmm. Okay, But that's that's the short answer for that committee. Any other questions? Yes. If you nominate someone for employee of the month and they don't get it, do you have to nominate them again each time? Can you make yes. So, sorry. The first question was committee on committees, which there was an attempt at an answer. The second question is if you nominate someone for employee of the month, how does that work? Um, so that is if once someone is nominated, they are in the pool. And so, and they stay in the pool for up to a year after their nomination. Now, not that I support voting blocks or anything, but if you get everybody in on nominating that staff, the more nominations that person is, the higher that person is in the pool and in the rankings to become employee of the month. Um, employee of the month has a um, recognition of $200. That is $200 plus a little bit to account for taxes. So when you are nominating someone, you are giving them a very tangible recognition of the work that they do. They go out in the newsletter, and we recognize them at the reception that's happening tonight. Yay! They also are put in a pool for employee of the year. The employee of the year, um, once you make employee of the month, you're put in that pool. You guys might have just participated in the elections. That Not elections, but the whatever I'm calling that. Voting. Thank you. That's the other term for elections. Thank you. Um, they're, they're entered in for voting for employee of the year. That is $1,000 plus a little bit. Uh, recognition for them. Um, not that I would ever encourage anyone to do this because there's tons of people who do amazing things. But if you ever want to get together and be like, how can we make someone's day? Vote amongst yourselves, write a really awesome nomination. And then everybody else at that table writes a really awesome nomination so that people are recognized, that people are seen for the amazing work that they're doing. Did that answer your question, Levi? Yes. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? We shall continue on once more into the breach. Okay, so as hopefully um, I've mentioned, I meet with President Cantwell once a month. I'm We're working, so I work with her individually. Jana Lee will be taking over that in a couple months. Um, we, as the SCA, have more connections with deans and VPs than we've ever had before um, and are just trying to build bridges, open communication. That's our hope. Um, and in those communications, we've gotten some feedback. So some concerns that I took to President Cantwell was childcare. I don't know how many people in this room, actually, how many people in this room does childcare affect? Okay. For the group we have in here, that's actually pretty epic um, for the number that just raised their hands. So it is, it is a concern. It has been a concern. Um, and generally, when I talk to people, I hear that's a problem for everyone. It is. We actually only have 49% of child care coverage in Cache County. Um, we are at 37% for the state of Utah as a whole of child care providers to meet needs. So we are only meeting 37% of child care need in the state of Utah. Um, and so I went to President Cantwell and there was a grant on the table and Audrey back here helped me with this. And we went, we have a problem. Here's a building that could maybe qualify for the grant. Will you give us money? <laughs> And she looked at me and went, I have so many questions. <laughs> As she should, because even though I'm a business assistant, I attach receipts, people. I attach receipts and I talk at people. That's my job. I don't actually, I'm not well-versed in childcare. 
But she took the request seriously, even though I didn't know what I was doing. So she gave us a homework assignment. So she said that we need to determine current need and childcare need over the next 10 years, determine how it's currently being handled at USU, who we need to talk to to get a handle on how it's handled and where we can grow. And then after that meeting, Dave Kelly invited me into his office and we had a fantastic chat about what he would need from us in order to get childcare on campus. And we left with a fantastic little equation that had to do with show need, show opportunity, show possibility, we'll give you money. That is determining that we can show the first three things. Money is generally attached to those three things. But we've taken that seriously. I'll be with you in just a second. We took that seriously. And so as the board, we have a task force that is dedicated to finding the answers to those questions so that we can define need, we can define opportunity, and we can define possibility. So if you would like to join that effort, please email me. It'll be fun. Know that that's what we are in process of. The open forum that I mentioned is an opportunity to gather that information. Um, we also will be sending out a survey that I mentioned here a little bit ago, saying, could you please define your child care needs? What are they? What have they been? What might they be? Please, 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 please fill out that survey because that gives us the numbers that we need to show need. Yes. So child care, is it for Golden campuses or for also for statewide campuses? For now, we are tackling Logan because in discussion with statewide, I've heard that they have more options than we do, but that is a discussion in some areas, not in all of them, some areas. So we're, we're starting here because it has the greatest population. That's not my favorite answer, but the more that we tackle this issue, I want to get it as more of a statewide conversation, not just a Logan campus conversation. Yes. How connected do you feel the different SEA chapters meaning non-Logan statewide are, and is there a way to become even more connected? Yes, 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 love that question. Thank you. Um, are we connected now? Sort of, because Alyssa bought everybody pie for the gratitude gathering. I heard that in, in our meeting uh, as I was visiting Extension and statewide. They're like, you guys got us pie so much. And, um, they didn't say it like that. That's my enthusiasm and exuberance coming out, just to be clear. But that mattered to me. That, that mattered that the pie was appreciated. Um, it is a start, but we have a very long road to go. Um, something that I'm actually about to hit on is the Tiger team, and that will address that. So if I don't answer your question, I promise I'll come back and I'll answer more. But part of, so our childcare, that's something we're tackling right now. If you wanna be involved, please let us know. Um, and please fill out the survey or my two big takeaways from that. Second is the Tiger team that Dr. Rungu mentioned this morning. So as I was meeting with President Cantwell and I said, surveys, she's like, surveys suck. And I was like, oh, but I can only do surveys. <laughs> That's all that I've got. She didn't say it in those terms, but it's basically surveys don't give you what you need. What about going out and actually meeting with staff like I did? with my face-to-faces. Like, would you be interested in doing that? And I was like, yes, but I do not have the authority to do that. I do not have authority outside of my gratitude gatherings in this conference to pull staff into a room. She's like, you, you don't? I'm like, nope. So we pulled up university policy. Staff, uh, the Staff Employee Association only exists in three university policies. One of them is a grievance committee. One of them is not stated, but we're an association, and it says we can exist as an association. And then there's one mention to CEA and PEA that has not been updated since the early 2000s. We don't count that one. So <laughs> President Cantwell uh, gave us a delightful opportunity, and that opportunity was to call a team together from HR. So we're working with Doug Bullock, the head of HR, with Jane Arungu from the, the division of DEI, and then called together representatives from College of Ed, facilities, statewide, and what used to be the EVP's office. And we are sitting down in a room together and we are saying, what do we hope that a staff association could be? Hello, what? can I help you? <laughs> Haley's on it, we're good. Um, so our question, so we're, we're as ourselves as different representatives of the university are trying to look at that question and think about that question. We're also looking at the state as a whole. How do other groups handle staff associations? Who do they report to? What partners and collaborators do they have? What kind of work that they do? Um, up to this point, 
the SCA has been a largely internal association. And that was because of the nature of the university and how the university worked. Right now with President Cantwell and with changes from COVID, we're being invited to show up in very new and different ways. Um, are we ready for that? We're, we're gonna find out. And so this team is to help us figure out, are we even meeting needs? What needs are on the table? What does this look like? Just one second and I'll get right there. So we're in active discussions. Another survey, even though they aren't effective, is coming out soon. Please be honest. This is for posterity's sake. <laughs> and if any of you know that reference, kudos. Thank you. Please share, because this is an opportunity to actually write the Staff Employee Association into policy. We will exist at the university level. We will move from being an internal organization to being an, an active university-wide, statewide organization. I don't know if that makes anybody else excited, but that like curls my toes with excitement. Not my hair, obviously, but my toes. So please take part. Take part in the open forum as we're having those discussions. Please fill out the survey. Part of what I did as I was traveling the state was asking these questions. How would you like to be represented by the staff association? Where do you want us to fit? Now, feedback that you give is not a guarantee because we are having so many discussions in so many places. And any feedback you give means that we are making more informed decisions and more informed discussions. As, G as, as Jane said today, when we don't feel like we're part of decisions, when we don't feel like we're part of the communication process, we don't feel like we belong. This is our opportunity to create this and to engage. And I will try and keep you as informed, Jenna Lee will try and keep you as informed as we possibly can about feedback and how discussions are going, because these conversations matter. I rattled for a bit, but what's your question? <laughs> Two constraints. Um, one, President Cantwell's request was that we keep it small. Um, and so she's like, you, do, if you put more than six people on a team, nothing will happen. And so they, we chose, she suggested College of Ed. I agreed with College of Ed because there are a number of staff that are in that college that have a number of a variety of roles. Some colleges, some divisions have sort of more of a consistent job description layout. Not all of them, but some of them do. Um, and College of Ed has a wide variety of roles and ways that they function and ways where they bridge the gap between staff and faculty. And so we wanted to get that perspective as part of our discussions as well. Thank you, that is a fantastic question. Because when she's like, choose six, I was like, actually it's only five because I'm one of the six. So I was like, I'm doomed. So we sat down with the SCA presidents and we went, who can we pull? Who has some perspective here? And then we want to reach out and get the rest of your perspective because we understand that there's a variety of experience. Okay, and then this last one, we're in process. This look might change a lot, um, but President, when I first met with President Cantwell, I went, staff aren't invited to the table. Staff get solutions. They aren't part of the problem solving process. And we would really love to be part of the problem solving process. Like when we're on the ground and there are needs, we'd love to be part of that discussions. Now, some of you might be sitting in the room going, no, my Dean always talks to me. My VP has opened discussions. And that is true in some divisions and colleges. And it brings me so much joy. And it's not true across the board. And so my hope as SCA president in building these bridges is to have that be more consistent across the university. That's a discussion that we're having with the leadership team that we're in process of. Um, so when she, when I said that, she went, well, give me a solution. What do you guys want? How do you want to be invited to the table? And I went, you asked us what we want. I was very excited. I went to my board, I called an emergency meeting and I'm like, guys, we need a solution. And they're like, solution for what? I was like, I did not give context. So I gave context and then we had the discussion. And what we came up with was a leadership retreat that happens twice a year. We're still fleshing things out. Mostly this is just to tell you this thing kind of exists. We're working on it, but it's discussions that we've had. And it's the idea that faculty senate representatives, graduate student representatives, staff representatives are sitting at the table and we are looking at real time issues that the university is facing. And we're part of the discussions that are happening as they're going. 
Um, so if you have more questions, please let me know. This is sort of a big question mark because it's the conference. After the conference, I will hopefully have less question marks. So this is the work this this is the work President Cantwell has invited us into at the university. Other things that we're working on because we are an ever evolving and growing organization. Association. I've been informed we're not an organization. We're an association. I have high hopes. So other pieces that we are looking at, developing and improving a communication strategy with campus and staff. So the newsletter is a piece of this. Meeting with deans and VPs are a piece of this. It's happening by sheer force of will. I would really love to have it actually written down into a process so we know how it's happening every year. We are working on that process. Um, we are currently, Jenna Lee has been fantastic in spearheading a review of our bylaws so that we know did did you guys all know that our bylaws like haven't actually been formally revised in like since 2016? Have we changed them a lot because you can in the bylaws by meetings, in board meetings? Yes. Would I love to have a more uh, solidified process for that to happen? Definitely. So we are reviewing our bylaws to make sure that we are actually in accordance with the things that govern us and that they are flexible, but also strong enough for us to be the presence on the presence of the university we hope to be. And then our other one, this might sound silly, but anybody who knows anything about staff turnover, anybody who knows anything about processing knows you need good onboarding. It doesn't exist right now. We're working on it so that when you, because I know every one of you, when you get that email in April, are going to self-nominate to be on the board. And when you do and you select to be either a research and evaluation or connections or professional development or media and public relations, when you come on, we will give you a welcome document. And in that welcome document, it will give you a link to Vox. In that document, it will lay out what your job title and duties actually are. And it will lay out to you how to do the work we're asking you to do so that as you take part in this organization. So it might seem kind of silly with all the other things that I've listed. I should have started with this. This should have been the first thing, not the last thing, but it's on the board and it's happening. So if you want to take part in any of these things, please email me, say, I want to help. I've got two hours. What can I do? We will have something. I promise. Because 26 people serving 2,700 staff and trying to communicate across campus and do things is not enough. So you might all be sitting here wondering, why in the heck did you just spend 43 minutes of my life talking at me about SCA? I'm so glad you asked. This is why. Come join us. This is what this all boils down to. Uh, as I mentioned, we're looking at the bylaws right now. We have high hopes to open up more opportunities. We actually need people to nominate themselves for the roles so that we have enough people to do the work. And so a really big piece of this is Take part. Maybe you're not ready. Maybe you've just started your position and you have a lot to figure out and you're not ready to be on the board. That's good because technically you can't run for office until you've been at the university for a year. But you can still join us. Email me. We'll put you on a task force. Maybe you want to help with childcare. Maybe you want to be part of discussions with staff and faculty. Maybe you want to just help with a conference or a reception. Whatever it is that you are interested in, there is a place for you with the board. There's a place for you within this association. As, as Dr. Rungu mentioned this morning, we make the community that we live in. And so my question to all of you is what community do you want to make? I had to laugh when she's like, I'm another year closer to my, that's not what she said, but she said, if you wake up in the morning and you go, I'm another year closer to retirement, you're probably not in a great place. For the first five years at this university, I woke up every morning going, when am I going to find a different job? When am I going to be somewhere different? Because I didn't feel like I had a place and I didn't feel like I had a purpose outside of whatever, whoever was above me had to tell me. And then I got a little email that said, hey, we really need someone to run for SCA president. And I was like, board of trustees, meet with the president of the university. That could be cool. So I volunteered and here we are a year down the road. But it was when I chose to put back in to the university that was paying me that I really love waking up in the morning. It was when I chose to put back in, when I chose to find places that did want ideas, that I was running from the motor pool up to the library this morning because I forgot the Aggie shuttle didn't run today because it's spring break. 
but I was excited and I was joyous because we get to put on a conference today. We get to bring all of you in a space together and say, let's learn. That's exciting. Being able to go and have conversations with President Cantwell and invite change and have her actually go, yes, and is A, terrifying, but B, really exciting. Because we are in a place right now where change is not only possible, but it is being requested. And so my invitation, however silly, however cheesy you may think this is, please invest. Because what I've heard for years up until this point is, well, staff don't share their ideas. Staff don't engage. Staff don't want to. Now, do I realize that if you've already been told no 20 times that you don't want to say yes that time? Yes, I get it. And now is the opportunity when they're asking, please be ready with an answer. Please join us in the discussions that we're having. Um, board self-nominations are happening in April. Please look at that email and please consider. Please also know that there are ongoing discussions about the board and we want it to work for staff. So if you have suggestions, if you have questions, if you have a dying need for a different committee that addresses something we don't, now is your opportunity. Please come talk to us because I want to make this association something that works for everyone. Now, will everything work for everyone all the time? I'm seeing some like skeptics, that's fair. But can we make it work for many people most of the time? Yes. And that is that is my hope. That is that is my soapbox for all of you today. I do want to thank each and every one of you for taking the time out of your day. I understand that we put on these kinds of conferences, we provide these professional development opportunities, and that does not stop your inbox from getting more full. That does not stop your students from messaging you and saying, how in the heck do I register for this? That does not stop your boss from coming and knocking at your door saying, I really need you to go do this thing. I understand that our work does not stop when you come here. And so I so appreciate that you all chose in, that you leaned in and you went, that can wait for now. Doesn't mean it's gonna wait for forever. Probably every break, you guys will pull out your phones and you'll check your emails and you'll help people. Thank you. But also thank you for coming for the conference and for leaning in. Our biggest hope in all of this was I went down to Price last year and I saw their professional development conference. I went on a whim. They're just like, they're doing a conference. You should go check it out. I went and I fell epically in love with it. The swag was also awesome. Uh, I'm not gonna apologize for our swag because I love our swag, but tumblers, people, go to Price next year. It'll be awesome. Just tell them that you're coming. That's my only request. Our hope is to, to really and truly foster belonging across the state. We are a many and varied organization. We represent a variety of kinds of staff. We represent a variety of pay scales. We represent a variety of needs. And our hope was for these this week to bring people together to experience learning and growth and togetherness. And so I hope that you will take full advantage of that. My final pieces, and then I'll be done talking at you and I'll open it for questions. First, at the end of every slide, oh wait, I have a slide. Love it when that happens. Ah! So at the end, you will have a QR code. This QR code does a couple things for us. One, it tells us how many people are in the room. President Cantwell says, how many people have you affected with this conference? She gave us $10,000 to do this conference. She went, staff are a priority for me, let me put my time, let me put my money at it. And then later she came to me and said, we'd like to have a debrief so that we know how the president's office can be more involved next year. So she also wants to put time and effort into it as well. And so we need your feedback. We need those numbers to know how this is helping you or what you never want to see again. You can perfectly say, never let Allison present again. That's totally on the table because Jana Lee will be running it next year and I can like disappear and it'll be fine or I'll come back and we'll have discussions about the Enneagram, which could also be awesome. If you don't know what it is, look it up, or human design, both are awesome. So please fill out the survey. This survey enters you into 60 drawings from everything from little bold plushies to coolers to hammocks to ice cream gift cards and chocolate. So please fill this in. Please make sure that you leave us your email because we have to have your email to email you to tell you you've won. Um, we will be getting stuff out to statewide campuses. So if you went like, 
just do it. Please just enter the drawing. Please take part and please take like talk. We have the reception tonight from five to seven at the West Stadium Center. Please come, please mingle. There will be more name tags. So you can throw this one away and you can start fresh with Bob. Whatever you wanna do, please come join us. If you haven't RSVP'd, I planned ahead. Come anyway. We're glad to have you with us. There'll be a shuttle in front of the vet med building at five o'clock that will take you down. So come for 15 minutes, come for two hours. We are doing the employee of the year awards and the academic advising advisor award. Um, so please come, please take part, celebrate with us um, and then come join us for lunch in the atrium tomorrow. And then food trucks, I need you. This is okay. This is the other invitation. Invitation number one, nominate yourselves. If you're not ready to nominate yourselves, please vote. Our voter turnout is increasing every year. When I was nominated, when I was elected president, 290 people voted. I felt so warm and fuzzy, guys. 290 people entrusted me with the fate of the SCA. So also, if you're all sitting here going, this has gone in a very poor direction, get out and vote. You can change the direction. It's great. 664 people voted last year. So we doubled. We doubled our vote. This year, I would love to triple it or quadruple it. So when you see, so for the next two months, next three months, when you see that newsletter come out, nominate yourselves, vote, fill out the surveys. And then come join us for food. And then my final invitation for you all is, we have a food truck rally on Friday. It's for everybody. It is pay your way, but it's for everybody. So tell everybody in your office to go get food with you. We have fried foods, we have sushi foods. Do we have sushi foods? We have rice foods. Uh, we have a variety of foods. Please come join us. Thank you so much for coming and taking part. And I saw two questions. Did I see two questions? Yes. Oh, it's not, I'm so hurt. You will get a survey. <laughs> You will get a, so, uh, so this survey is what enters you into the drawings. You will get a final survey Monday morning. Please fill out that survey. And that's where all of the, like you actually have space to say things, say things, please. And this survey will be at the end of each of the breakout sessions. Yes. And those will be listed. So the breakout sessions are listed in the, the ends of these surveys. If you have comments, concerns, or complaints, or lobbies, those will all land in your inbox on Monday. Please take the survey. Any other questions? I can't outweigh you. <laughs> and I will. But I won't because we have the rest of the conference to get to. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a fantastic time, everybody.